Hi, so my name is uh, Kok Shun Yang, and I'm uh, going to talk about uh, building a two-year data science program uh, in higher vocational education. And in Swedish, it's called uh, Yrkeshögskola. Uh, so uh, you will, I will talk more about who I am and uh, what uh, Yrkeshögskola or uh, occupational, uh, higher vocational education is. Uh, so first of all, we we'll start with some highlights of this presentation, and uh, we'll talk about who am I. Oh, there comes uh, more audience. I can wait a little bit. Uh, so, and then I'll talk a little bit of uh, what is higher uh, vocational education, uh, followed by uh, the curriculum that uh, it is designed to meet uh, the data science, like a data science project in industry. Uh, and a little bit about the students uh, and uh, their valuable work uh, that they are doing in the industry, in data science industry. And then I'll talk about uh, how we built uh, the data science community uh, for, uh, uh, in this uh, program. And it is a modern uh, education that we have built uh, to reflect a modern way of uh, working. So we start with uh, who am I? So this is me, Kokshun. Uh, I have studied engineering mathematics uh, and then biomedical engineering, uh, followed by a teacher's program, and then has worked within medtech, so uh, as medtech engineer, then high school uh, teacher, uh, in uh, science, technology, engineering, math, uh, so STEM uh, subjects. And then now I'm working as an AI teacher uh, in uh, IT Högskolan. And uh, it's here that I built this uh, data science program uh, from scratch since it didn't exist uh, two years ago uh, before I started uh, in this school. Uh, so we start with the problem. So the industry, they want to hire people. And they want to hire different types of uh, people. Uh, for example, data engineers, data scientists, Python developers, machine learning engineers, data analysts. And these people, uh, they need to have different uh, skill set. So they have these skills and many more of course so i'm not gonna read them up but uh, we know that there are a lot of skills that they need uh, so where do we find this type of people uh, so this led to like we we take this need from industry into uh, school and uh, create this program so a higher vocational education, Yrkeshögskola, it's uh, a way to uh, fulfill this need. Uh, so based on this need, uh, we create a two-year program uh, and uh, we have input from industry partners and a lot of people from industry, they, s they feedback and say like, yeah, this we should include in the education. Uh, so we build this uh, uh, education. Uh, and what's interesting with higher vocational education is that uh, we can adapt to changes. For example, when industry changes, because uh, we know that data science and AI, it's a very fast growing uh, uh, subject. So when something changes, we get feedback from you the data science community. We get feedback from our students in internship or in work, and they feedback to me, and I will include this in the education. Uh, so this uh, it's highly uh, adaptable. So the curriculum, it's developed to suit the industrial needs. And uh, the students, uh, they learn both theory uh, in school, and they apply it in internships. So they have in total two uh, internships, uh, which uh, 
in total, I think, around half a year, uh, if you count them together, together with thesis. Uh, and some examples of student backgrounds, you, you could say that they are div uh, divided into two groups. So one group uh, are students with uh, a lot of uh, experiences uh, in uh, working uh, and experiences uh, in uh, studying. And then we have the other type of uh, students which are high school graduates that have chosen to study this program instead of uh, like traditional university. Uh, so, when I developed this, I have, uh, I have uh, a uh, goal in mind that uh, I want to create some kind of uh, uh, which is a through line of the whole education. So then I base it on uh, a very simplified data science project. So we have real world data. And from this, we get, so in the real world, we collect data somehow. And we have to pre-process it, so we have to clean the data. So, and afterwards, uh, we have structured data. Followed by, we have to visualize this uh, data. Uh, and then build different types of models. So we have machine learning. And finally, we have some kind of application. So this data science project could be part of an application. For example, we have some kind of dashboards, for example. Uh, but here we see like some kind of uh, through line of the whole uh, uh, of a project. I know that this is very simplified, but it's, it's to make it uh, understandable when we build it up and uh, so that students don't see like one course as uh, an island so they have to have like all courses are like going together so then from start to finish we have different types of courses so we study python of course uh, this is de facto language we use in uh, machine learning and data science and then data processing, uh, then uh, we go into like cleaning the data, visualizing the data uh, with uh, various tools. Uh, and then uh, what I stress is very important is that they learn mathematics. So <laughs> linear algebra, they have to know some mathematical literacy in order to understand uh, and, uh, and uh, learn from, for example, literature and papers and uh, understand the machine learning concepts followed by more mathematics so we have uh, statistical methods and then this goes into now they have the mathematical foundations and they have programming uh, from python from data processing it's time to uh, use this knowledge into the machine learning course uh, where they learn how to do regression and classification so they learn both the theory and they learn how to apply it and then we have we go into deep learning uh, which is uh, then we have uh, computer vision and natural language processing and now from uh, today i understand that uh, large language models are a very hot topic right now so uh, there's a plan to include this uh, in the future so also, uh, if you have more feedback to me later, uh, just tell me and I will probably include it. I'll try to squeeze it down to two years. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Uh, but then uh, there's, uh, they need to learn databases of also, uh, so SQL. And then now comes the internship part. So here they go out to industry. They go out to your companies and become your colleagues. And uh, then they do valuable work uh, together with you. Uh, and uh, also you, together with my students, uh, can feed back, back into the education. And we also have data engineering, which is, um, this is actually from the industry. They have said that, uh, yeah, right now data engineering is a very hot topic. And it's very important that they understand these different types of concepts. Uh, so uh, then we have included this one before their last internship and thesis work. 
but one thing uh, I have to mention is that uh, these slides were a little bit uh, old. Uh, in the meantime, after I've submitted this, this have actually changed. So data engineering has moved before internship one. Uh, and this is uh, one thing that is very cool with uh, higher vocational education that we can uh, change and adapt uh, the subjects and adapt different uh, types of courses depending on uh, what industry wants and uh, the feedback from the students. So I will continue to uh, go into a specific course right now. So we're going to machine learning. And you'll see how, uh, how it's built. And uh, this, this is like a typical course. Uh, and uh, other courses follow similar structure. So uh, like structure is very important for me in uh, pedagogy in order for the students to understand and follow. So if we look at machine learning, the course overview, it looks like this. We, we use GitHub. So this is uh, Markdown uh, in uh, a readme in GitHub. Uh, so this is the course plan. Uh, here we can see uh, we have regression, we have classification, we have different types. Of we have lab, one lab, but uh, it's actually uh, two labs. Uh, and uh, we have unsupervised learning, and we have some. Uh, then we have uh, some repetition and exam. So this is the course uh, one course plan. And uh, when, we when you click on each of these uh, weeks, you get into more resources. Uh, but I will show you the resources also. So the GitHub structure looks like this. We have the exercises. Uh, we have lectures. We have resources. Uh, these are the most important. Actually, we have more. These have been updated also. Uh, so we have uh, code alongs, uh, and we have theory session as well. And this is what it could look like, uh, the lectures. So here are all the topics that we cover. And in each of these notebooks, we have uh, the structure. We have a markdown uh, explaining the theory. And we have code uh, where students can uh, follow along and uh, use. Uh, and also, we have. Uh, of course, they need data to work with. And the theory part, uh, I use uh, whiteboard. So I use, uh, I don't use traditional whiteboard. I use uh, my, uh, a whiteboard software. And then I use a Wacom pen uh, to draw the theory. Uh, so that uh, this is uh, to adapt for uh, students that follow along at home. Uh, so these are resources. And a typical day, it looks like this. We start from nine. We have a theory using digital whiteboard. And we have code along session, followed by some exercises. Oh. So uh, here they, uh, they get the theory uh, in uh, digital whiteboard. We have code along, uh, so they follow along uh, coding. And then we have some uh, exercises. Uh, so this is a typical day. And when, we're de when I designed this modern education, we built up a Discord community where we, uh, we have teachers, we have different cohorts, and we have alumni, and also uh, industry people, so they can uh, talk to each other and learn from each other. And each lecture is uh, live streamed uh, in Discord, and it's also recorded. So students can follow along at home. Uh, and students, they can help each other on uh, Discord. And they help each other a lot. Uh, so uh, it's very good uh, resource uh, for the students. And we have two hybrid days where we are in school. And then uh, I, uh, I uh, stream it uh, live. And we have one remote day, which I'm home teaching. So everything is in distance and to self-study days. This is to adapt to like the uh, modern way of working, like sometimes you're home, sometimes you're in office, etc. And the students, they build up a GitHub portfolio. Uh, so they have different type of repositories for each course. So this is Python, this is data processing, machine learning. So we have like code alongs, exercises, labs, explorations, and more, of course, and also their own projects. 
so this uh, will lead to that they have uh, uh, a lot of, uh, like they have this portfolio which they go into industry and say like, I'm applying for an uh, internship right now, uh, look at my portfolio. Uh, or they can uh, show this when they are applying for jobs, etc. Uh, so uh, this, uh, they build this up during the education. And students in internship, they have been working with different stuffs like a predictive model for fuel consumption, building data engineering pipelines, the different kinds of uh, EDAs, uh, dashboards, uh, Python testing for drones, uh, predictive models for loan default, uh, computer vision within trains, uh, building data engineering training course, uh, recommend a system for books, and many more. I can't uh, uh, give them all, uh, but uh, these are uh, there are a lot of other things they can do as well. Uh, industry, uh, just uh, if you want, you can reach out to my students afterwards. Uh, so some common challenges that I face when teaching data science is. Uh, why, I get this question a lot, why do we need to learn mathematics when there are packages implementing machine learning uh, problem, uh, algorithms? Uh, so the thing is, that then I tell them that it's very important to understand uh, the mathematics in order to understand algorithms, the limitations and what they can be used for, etc. and understand the literature. Uh, so, uh, and uh, the through line in the program, when there are more teachers involved, sometimes I need to go parental leave or something else, then uh, another teacher has to come. And then uh, what I do is like uh, we teach, we tell them like what have we learned before and what do we learn afterwards? So how do their, um, how do their um, uh, course come into uh, this context? And then some students that follow along remotely sometimes have difficulty keeping up, but also uh, a lot of uh, students that follow along remotely can keep up very well, uh, but uh, we usually encourage them to come to school some days per week, like one day a week or something, and then we can talk to them and, and have more like community in the class. And uh, finally, uh, I I want to. Uh, I want you to uh, uh, feedback me uh, whenever there's something you want to include in the data science uh, uh, in this data science education, or you want to uh, give me uh, whatever feedback. My GitHub portfolio is open for everyone, so you can go and check th uh, that out. And also, my LinkedIn portfolio is uh, and my LinkedIn profile is also open, so you can scan this too and uh, talk to me afterwards. Also, yes. I think uh, my time might be up. Thank you very much, <laughs> Kokshun. Thank you. For this great talk. <laughs> now it's time for the questions. Yes. Uh, and we have already a question there. Thank you. So I, I imagine that there is a real lack of time when it comes to uh, teaching all the maths mm -hmm. that you could uh, potentially teach in this uh, in the program of this scope. Yes. So I wondered if you have any I mean, what's your approach to w which math subjects do you teach, or um, like, how how do you handle this challenge of mm -hmm. not having time to go through the math mm. proper properly? Yes, so uh, that that's a very good question, and uh, the thing is, uh, we choose uh, linear algebra and statistics, and uh, we choose to uh, we very important is that we try to connect this to the other courses, so it's not like uh, an empty linear algebra course. Uh, it's it's like in linear algebra, but we understand that we try to connect it towards like uh, uh, how do we use linear algebra in neural networks? How do we use linear algebra in different machine learning concepts? And when they come to machine learning, they see they really see that uh, oh, linear algebra is really useful here. We understand that there's a lot of dimensions. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> we understand different planes, etc., and vectors, and uh, yeah. That's cool. Sounds like uh, you have you put in much more practical stuff compared to what I had w when I uh, was taught uh, linear algebra. Mm -hmm. Sounds cool. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have another question? Yes. 
Hello. I just wondered, has this education grown organically, or did it start as a data science program straight away? Because it seems like a lot of preparation for the first time, and then maybe not so much after that, or how did it work? Mm, yes, so so it's uh, grown uh, like it's grown all the time. But uh, I've had in mind in the beginning that it should be uh, data science. Uh, so, uh, but uh, like some courses we have changed. For example, before we had like visualization and storytelling instead of linear algebra. So then I threw that course away and uh, put in linear algebra. But the content there I spread out throughout all the courses so that uh, they still get uh, the visualization part and uh, storytelling, uh, but uh, they get it in uh, different places so that we get in more math. And also like we get uh, feedback from industry that we should have more uh, data engineering, so we have a data engineering course, et cetera. So it's uh, growing uh, organically and it's still growing. It's never finished. For how long has it been on? Uh, for uh, two years now, soon two years, uh, one and a half. Oh yeah, soon two years. It's just uh, two months left, I think. Yes. Thank you. Mm? Thank you. We have another question. Hi. Um, the project you're doing sounds amazing. Uh, I noticed that you uh, showed that it's not only for like recently graduated high school mm. students, but people that might be in other areas and like want to change to adapt to the need for the industry. Um, so I'm more curious about like the general um, distribution maybe of the people that are in the program right now. And if you have any policies in your admissions uh, to kind of work towards <coughs> issues that exist nowadays, like uh, age, uh, Mm. race and gender biases on mm. tech industry? Mm. Yes, that's a very good question. So like uh, we, we have first, you, you have to have like uh, very simple uh, mathematics from high school, uh, Mathe 2, and you have to have programming 1. Uh, so it's very fundamental. Uh, so it's uh, open for many people. Uh, and then uh, we have uh, like uh, then uh, for working with, uh, like we of course want to have more uh, women to apply to get more gender uh, equality, uh, but this is a general problem in uh, in the tech uh, tech industry and in education. Uh, but uh, we're working on it, and uh, and we have, uh, for example, uh, s trying to get. Uh, more collaboration with, for example, women in tech that is here also, <laughs> and uh, so we can get more uh, more of uh, this question into the education. I think it's very important. There is no more time uh, for question. I thank you so much. I'm a huge fan of this program personally. Oh, nice. thank uh, you. <laughs> so thank you for being our speaker today. Mm? Um, thank you very much. <laughs>